The recording you just heard is Theodore Roosevelt announcing bugle calls that were used by his Rough Riders during the Battle of San Juan Hill in the Spanish-American War. The recording was made in 1898, a few months after the battle. Let's look at the exhibit, beginning on the left and moving clockwise, to learn more about the famous Rough Riders. Who were they? and how did this collection of Rough Rider memorabilia end up in a museum in Las Vegas, New Mexico. In January 1898, the U.S. battleship Maine was sent to Havana to protect U.S. interests and to provide a show of force to the Spanish government in Cuba. When an explosion on February 15th blew up the battleship and killed 260 men, Remember the Maine emerged as a battle cry as Americans demanded war with Spain. The resulting Cuban campaign of the Spanish-American War was short, lasting only from April until August 1898. But New Mexico and the Southwest played a distinguished part in the drama. When hostilities with Spain threatened, Theodore Roosevelt, then Assistant Secretary of the Navy, decided it was time to raise a company of mounted riflemen. Roosevelt knew that there would be little time to train these soldiers to ride and shoot and his experiences on his ranch in the Dakota Territory made him realize where he could find men to send quickly into battle with little training. He looked to the Western Territories, where there were cowboys and other rugged individuals who would be ready-made cavalrymen. Congress authorized three regiments of cavalry to be formed from the West. In April 1898, the call for volunteers went out across New Mexico and Arizona, which were not yet states and across the Oklahoma and Indian territories. Recruits were expected to be a good shot, able to ride anything in the line of horse flesh, a rough and ready fighter, and above all must absolutely have no understanding of the word fear. Out of the 12 troops that made up the 1st United States Volunteer Cavalry, three full troops, consisting of 358 men, came from the New Mexico Territory. They were mostly cowboys or miners, although 50 other occupations were represented. The Westerners would mingle with additional troops who included New York policemen, as well as athletes from Eastern clubs and recruits from Ivy League colleges. In the center of this exhibit, there is an alphabetical list of the Rough Riders if you would like to look up a particular name. Frank Brito, a Yaqui Indian from southern New Mexico, was in his teens when he became a cowboy for the Circle Bar outfit near Silver City. He was on the job in late April 1898 when he received an urgent message from his father. When I got home after riding 10 hours, it was late at night, but her house was all lit up. I thought for sure somebody had died. My dad came out and said he had news from Fort Bayard that war had been declared against Spain and that they wanted volunteers, especially cowboys. He told Joe and me to go to Silver City and enlist. In those days, you didn't talk back to your father. In a ceremony at the Palace of the Governors in Santa Fe on May 6, 1898, the recruits were sworn in. They were immediately sent by train to San Antonio, Texas, where they were assigned horses and where the press gave them the nickname Rough Riders. From San Antonio, they were sent to Tampa, Florida, where they joined 30,000 other soldiers. In Tampa, they boarded transport ships for the trip to Cuba. But due to a lack of space, only companies E, F, and G made the trip, and their horses were left behind in Florida. Frank Brito served with honor, but he was one of the soldiers who stayed behind in Florida. I was the only one of the colonel's boys who could both read and write Spanish and English. Because of this, I was put in charge of the stockade for Spanish prisoners in Tampa. As you look at the exhibit cases, you will see photographs of some of the Rough Riders, along with medals they were awarded. 
There are bullets used by the Rough Riders to shoot at the Spanish soldiers, and bullets used by the Spanish soldiers to shoot back at the Americans. There are fragments of captured flags that once flew over a Spanish fortress during the fighting. There is an example of a lightweight 1898 cavalry saddle, the kind the Rough Riders would have used if their horses had made the trip to Cuba with them. Also on display is an ornately crafted cowboy saddle given to George Rowland of Troop F by the citizens of Deming, New Mexico when he returned home from the war. There are two bugles, one Spanish and one American, that were used to call troops to battle during the war. There is a tin cup from an American soldier's mess kit. If you look closely, you will see a hole from a bullet that pierced it. There are uniforms that were worn by the soldiers, including a khaki jacket that belonged to Dan Ludi from Las Vegas, New Mexico. Notice that one button is missing from Ludi's jacket. The button may have come off during rough use in the field, but it is also said that upon returning to the States, soldiers ripped buttons off their jackets to give to ladies as souvenirs. On display is a lithograph of the Battle of Las Huasimas where American troops, including Rough Riders and Buffalo Soldiers, skirmished with Spanish soldiers and forced the Spanish to retreat. The American troops pressed on to Kettle Hill and San Juan Hill. According to historian Timothy Egan, their battles were sharp, vicious crawls through jungle terrain in killing heat. Let's listen to Jesse Langdon, who was the youngest Rough Rider, as he describes in an interview in 1966 what he experienced almost 70 years earlier. And by golly, the blockhouse was located, it wasn't over uh, 75 yards across the ravine there. Some of their outposts were posted down in the ravine. Hmm. And as they climbed out, well, they made pretty good targets. I said, look. Look at there. I said, look at there. And the fella climbing up there in his situation where he kept slipping like this. And I can see him yet, you know. And I thought how pitiful while I was drawing the beat on him. He was clawing away with his feet this way and his hand up like that. And there was a streak of sweat. Right? He had a blue denim uniform on there, a striped blue denim like carpenters wear in this country, you know. That was their uniform. And I could see that. So I aimed right for the that uh, under his arm like that and I brought it right down to the to the uh, rim of that perspiration and I let go and he crumpled up and went down the hill. When the fighting ended in Cuba in July 1898, the Rough Riders were sent back to the United States and mustered out on September 15th at Montauk Point, New York. Some of the soldiers who had served in Cuba went on to fight in the ongoing war against Spain in the Philippines. Jose Brito, Frank's older brother, died in the Philippines. Captain Maximiliano Luna of New Mexico was commander of Troop F and survived the battles in Cuba, but also died in the Philippines. Camp Luna in Las Vegas, where troops trained for World War II, was named in his honor. After the war, some of the Rough Riders went on to participate in Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West Show, which was the blockbuster entertainment extravaganza of its day. Roosevelt's Rough Riders recreated their famous charge up San Juan Hill, but this time they were on horseback. So, how did the Rough Rider collection end up in the City of Las Vegas Museum? The veterans were a tightly knit group devoted to their leader, Theodore Roosevelt. Since Las Vegas was a large city centrally located in the area where the recruits had come from, and it offered railroad access, hotels, and other amenities, it was a logical choice for their first reunion site. In August 1899, Colonel Roosevelt was met at the Las Vegas train station by over 600 of his former troops. Roosevelt stayed at the Castaneda Hotel while most of the men camped out in nearby Lincoln Park. Festivities included a meeting at the Duncan Opera House, along with a fireworks display, memorial services, concerts, a parade, and a rodeo. In later years, the reunions were held in various cities throughout the West. At the 50th anniversary meeting in Prescott, Arizona in 1948, those attending voted to hold all subsequent reunions in Las Vegas, New Mexico, 
and to keep attending the reunions to the last man. The final reunion was held in 1967, and it was attended by only Frank Brito and Jesse Langdon. Brito died in 1973, and Langdon died in 1975. In a letter to Frank Brito in 1958, Ozella Todd Hunter, the widow of Rough Rider William J. Love of Las Vegas, wrote this statement. I am a lone woman trying to save the Rough Riders' relics and mementos for the future. All I have is a very deep love for these men whose memory I am trying to perpetuate and a desire that they will not be slurred in any way. The items that Miss Todd Hunter collected became the core of the Rough Riders Memorial Collection here at the museum.